Today I'm in Cape Cod and I'm going clamming. I have always wanted to try to do this and with a little bit of luck, I'll have some clams for my next recipe. I'm meeting up with Steve Hoxie. He's been clamming on Cape Cod for over 65 years and is going to give me all the tools I need to get started. Welcome to Cape Cod. Today we're going to do a little clamming out there. I think I'm going to let you wear these today. What are these? These are waders. They protect you from the elements. They're waterproof, hopefully. <laughs> all right, that, yeah. Hopefully. That I haven't put any holes in them. And today I'll show you different ways that we do this. Put the rake in the ground, pull it, move back a little bit, keep it a little bit of angle. The tongs down, lift it up, and by God, we found one. <laughs> we take <laughs> it out, quick. we use our gauge here, just to be sure that that legal size, as long as the clam or cohog, which I call them cohogs, doesn't go through, it's a good one to keep. The small ones will just fall right through, and what I do is I grab the small one and I'll throw it close to shore. But when it matures, next year I know right where it is, oh. and I go back and get <laughs> it. Almost got your name <laughs> on it, right? Yeah. Right, right. <laughs> This size here is what we call a cherry stone. The next size a little bit bigger. That's a little neck. Then we have the big ones, and I call them chowders. They're delicious. I have a good feeling about today. Shall we uh, go try to hit them? See what we can get? Let's do it. Steve says he and his friends meet up often to go clamming, and I can see why. It's a beautiful day, the harbor is calm and peaceful, and there's something about working in the water that's super relaxing. The rake is almost like an extension of your hand. After a while, you feel the difference between a rock or a quahog. When you hit a rock, you hear a scraping sound. And when you hit a quahog, it's a, like a hollow sound. Mm. I think I got one. Oh, we got two. Oh, wow. All right, so what we're going to do is check it, make sure it's legal. Okay. All right, there we go. Works. We did it. First one. First one. Now we got another one here. And that's a keeper just by looking at it. Oh yeah. Right? All right. I think it's off to a good start. I hope so. Let's I'm feeling keep going. Good. <laughs> Let's I'm feeling keep good. going. In one way, it's pretty good the way we're doing it close together. So they can't swim between us. Right. <laughs> Here's another one. Here's another one. We got a little mud on that, and little, little mud, but we'll check them anyways, just to make sure. Oh, nope. we tried. All right, back to shore you guys. Yep. Thank you. <laughs> they talk to you. Is that how you're catching them? You kind of have the, the connection with the clams, right? Blow that whistle and they'll come Maybe. right to come you. Come on, come on. <laughs> oh, here we go. I need one. I need one of those big chowders. There you go. Hey, all, all right. right. Congratulations. Woo. Good job. Clamming. See the fun you can have out here? And there are a lot of good reasons to keep clamming, aside from a good meal and a relaxing day on the water. About five, six years ago, I was uh, making some chowder, and my wife called me in. She says, uh, Steve, I'd like you to come in here and look at something. So I went in, and one of the muscles was missing. And right in the middle of where that muscle was, she said, what's that? And I looked again, I picked up, it was a pearl. Oh my goodness. It was the size of a dime. So we're looking for oh. more than just meat here. Right. We gotta have our life savings somewhere around here. <laughs> <laughs> you never know. Keep digging, don't give up. Oh boy, good job. Hey, I love that. Finally, and, and catching up. Oh, you passed me, I think. <laughs> I can see why Steve's been doing it for so long. It's a great excuse to get out into the water and the cohawks don't get any fresher than this. Nice, yes. that works, you got some beauties. Good got clams. some beauties. These look good. Yeah. Got some, you know, good variety going on here. And what are you gonna do with them? I'm gonna take some of those chowders, yeah. stuff them up real good. It All right. Looks like we get a good catch here. Let you have what you want. And why don't you hold yeah. that? I think I'm gonna grab some of the big ones, is that all right? Sure. They're gonna work great for my well, recipes. Put this is great. Hey, you want to make sure you have enough. This is perfect, Steve. Thank you <laughs> okay, so much. Thank you. This was fantastic. Yeah, I, I learned a, a great deal about quahog clamming. You did a great job out there. <laughs> well, here are the fruits of my labor. I had such a blast with my buddy Steve waiting through the waters in Cape Cod. And today I'm going to show you guys how to cook these guys and stuff them. So the first thing I'm going to do is get my pot nice and hot. And uh, now I'm going to start cutting my veggies. Get a little bit of shallots here. Let's cut the top off. 
And I'm just gonna dice this up. Shallot's such a good flavor, kind of a light garlic and an onion. And just slice the celery up. Keep everything relatively small when you're cutting the veggies so it integrates into the stuffing fairly easily. And I wanna get two cloves of garlic. Who doesn't like garlic? One more. And this, just a mince. I also have some diced chili peppers. It's really gonna give a nice kick to these steamed clams. That's feeling pretty good and toasty. It's ready for my olive oil. Nice and translucent. Just a few tablespoons. Not to caramelize the veggies, but just to sweat them. And I'm gonna add all my veggies. And probably just maybe a tablespoon of this chili pepper because this stuff can be pretty spicy. I just want to get all these veggies just to be slightly transparent. Now I'm going to add my cohogs. And now I'm going to add some cellar artois and this is going to steam the clams. I'm going to use just a little bit of alcohol. It opens the shells, gives a nice aromatic touch to the whole broth and uh, just works wonderfully together. Now I'm going to cover these guys and let these steam for about five minutes or so until they pop open. All right, so it's been a few minutes. I'm gonna check my clams, and they are definitely ready. You can tell because right away they popped open. They're ready to go. And these guys are looking good. And what I love about cooking with shellfish, there's like little pockets of seawater uh, that these guys carry that infuse so much flavor in the broths. This is gonna bind everything together. All right, that's good right there. Just gonna put it aside, start taking the meat out of these cohogs. Right away you can tell it's so tender. Give these guys a good slice and dice. And I'm just gonna add these with my veggies and that clam broth. And now I'm gonna add my breadcrumbs. Set this aside. With this stuffing I'm gonna add some parsley and some thyme and that's just gonna give it a really nice herbaceous touch to it. The thyme I'm actually just gonna tear right off of this stem and add my parsley. A little bit of black pepper. And just a little bit of salt. The cohogs, it's a really big clam. It doesn't get lost in the stuffing. Great clam to use with this recipe. I think this is ready to go. Next, I'm gonna get these shells, break them in half, and it's just the perfect serving dish for the stuffing. This is just wonderful bread that just soaked up all this flavor from the clams. You don't want the stuffing falling out of the shell, so just Make sure you give it a good pat down. That should be good right there. Now I'm gonna cook these guys. Normally, you would cook these in an oven, get a really nice golden crisp going on. Cooking them on the grill, you're not gonna get the same convection effect, but thankfully, I have a remedy for that. I got this guy. And this is what's gonna give that nice golden brown delicious crust on the top of the stuffed clam. All right, so I'm just gonna finish these guys up. I'm not trying to char them, just want to give a nice golden brown color to the stuffing. That should be good. The shells can kind of rock back and forth, so I have a mixture of salt and just a tablespoon or so of water that's going to stabilize the clam shell so it doesn't slide around on the plate. And these are looking good. These are my stuffed quahog clams. I'm going to grab my cedra, just give it a nice pour. Let's give these guys a taste now. Still really moist. Nice crunch for the veggies. A little bit of spice from the pepper. It's just blending perfectly together. Let's give it a quick taste. Cohogs and cedra, it is a great combination. Thanks so much for watching Coastal. It's been a blast getting to travel to some of these awesome coastal towns, meeting amazing people, and bringing you some of my favorite recipes. Subscribe to Tastemade for more awesome food videos, and for more of my recipes, head on over to youtube.com slash Byron Talbot.